I'm Jillian from the Center for Academic Communication, and this is Strong Sentences. Today we'll look at how to write sentences that convey your great ideas in a way that's meaningful, clear, and easy for your reader to understand. We'll look at sentence length and variety, active and passive voice, avoiding dummy or empty subjects, strong subject and verb order and position, and avoiding dangling and misplaced modifiers. To begin with, keep in mind that most types of academic writing have an average sentence length of 15 to 25 words. Combine simple short sentences if they sound choppy and use transitional words and phrases to show how your ideas are connected. Try to stick to one idea per sentence and try not to put more than three clauses in a single sentence. In addition to keeping an eye on length, content, and connections, there are a few other things you can do to make your sentences strong. First, use active voice whenever possible. This isn't to say that you should avoid the passive voice at all costs. In fact, in some types of writing, such as scientific reports, the passive voice is preferred. Avoid it when it might make your writing overly wordy or unclear. Essentially, if you know who or what is performing the action of the sentence, and this information might help make your point stronger or more clear, use active voice. In the example, it is argued that universities should provide more scholarships for international students who argues this. If you can say, do. Next, try to avoid empty or dummy subjects like it is, this is, there are, and so on, which combine a pronoun and a be verb. This often creates excessively wordy writing with unclear subjects. For example, instead of saying there are three factors that influenced Austin's success, find the verb, in this case influenced, then find whatever or whoever is doing that action, in this case three factors. Do you need to use there are? If not, omit it. You save three words. Next, the most common and easily read sentence structure in English is the subject-verb-object order, with the subject and verb close together and at the beginning of the sentence. If your sentences are starting to get out of hand, find the verb and its subject, put them close together, and put them as near the beginning of the sentence as you can. For example, instead of writing, the participants, in addition to completing the survey, agreed to a follow-up interview, find the main verb, in this case agreed, and put words or concepts that are alike close together. Be careful about how you put the pieces together, though. In this revised version, the participants have already completed the survey and will be interviewed in the future. But if I say, the participants agreed to complete the survey and a follow-up interview, then the participants have already only agreed to vote. Neither has actually been completed yet. In the original sentence, it wasn't really clear which meaning was intended. Finally, be careful to avoid what are referred to as dangling or misplaced modifiers. Modifiers are chunks of language that describe, limit, or alter another part of the sentence. They can be phrases or a single word. In the sample sentence, having completed the introduction, the assignment was finished. Who completed the introduction? The subject is missing from the sentence. The subject of the modifying phrase is always grammatically whatever comes right after the comma. In this case, the sentence would mean that the assignment completed the introduction. It'd be great if assignments completed themselves, but does this really make sense to you? In Groucho Marx's famous joke, the phrase, in my pajamas, is modifying what it comes directly after, elephant. To avoid dangling and misplaced modifiers, make sure that your modifiers, especially those starting with an ing word, and your prepositional phrases are accurately placed and as close as possible to whatever they are modifying, and that the subjects of your verbs are actually present in a sentence and 100% clear. As you can see, there are usually a few different ways that you can reorganize for better clarity, so choose the one that sounds best to you. Okay, that concludes our session on strong sentences, where we looked at active voice, sentence length, avoiding empty subjects, using strong subjects and verbs, and avoiding modifier mistakes. I hope you've learned some ways to make your sentences stronger. Thanks for watching. To learn more tips and tricks to help improve your academic communication skills, visit the University of Victoria Centre for Academic Communication website for workshops and other resources. You can also book an appointment with one of our tutors by clicking the link in the description below. Good luck, and see you soon!